Hey guys, a new episode for Best Angels. Another episode for Best Angel Stories 2014. Shoot. There you go. Last time we were reading a blessing from China. This time we were reading Fireman Jim by Douglas Scott Clark. Knoxville, Tennessee looked like looked to be all crowded all crowded streets, tall buildings and smoggy air. Oh god, that was bright. Mm. It was nothing like home in the Smoky Mountains. But that year of 1949, when I was seven, Mama and Dad had brought all us kids to the city so Dad could take a job as a machinist at a tool and dye shop. What the? And dye shop. I don't know why, I don't know why that happened, but okay. One chilly afternoon, my brother, bu Buddy Earl, and I walked along the railroad tracks near our rented house. I carried an empty bucket that bumped against. All right, that was my buddy. Brother, Buddy Earl, and I walked along the railroad tracks near our rented house. I carried an empty bucket that bumped against my knees as I walked. See any coal on the ground? Not yet, Buddy Earl called back. At this part of the track, there was a railway crossing, and the train always slowed down here at the intersection. If we were lucky, bits of coal fell down the off the train and onto the ground where we could gather them up. A lot of the coal wasn't the best quality. Most of it clinkers and burned up lumps, but we need, did everything we could get to keep warm. Things, having, things hadn't gone so well since we came to the Knoxville, to Knoxville. Flatlanders, that's what we called the folks in the city. Thought I thought we were pretty strange. They had a name for us, too. Hillbillies. Just last week in school, I had gotten laughed at for telling the time. It's it's nine on one o'clock. It's nine on one o'clock. It's nine on one o'clock, I'd said. Oh, okay. The other kids laughed. Nine on one o'clock? They repeated, you talk funny. I kicked some pebbles on by the train tracks and found and frowned at the ground. I wasn't ashamed at being a hillbilly. I loved our little house on the mountain. We grew our own food in the gardens. The stream was full of fish for catching. And the wood own food in the gardens. The stream was full of fish for catching. And the woods were full of game. Here in the city, you needed money for food, and money was hard to come by. Dad had come down with pneumonia, probably because our house here was so cold. You could throw a cat through with the cracks in our walls. They were so big. Train's coming, Buddy Earl shouted. We stepped back from the tracks. The train slowed to a stop, down over the sides to the ground. Bunny and I dove to get it. That well, water boy's digging in the snow, someone called from the engine cab. It was a fireman. I could tell by the suit. He spelled suit wrong. 
by the suit on his face and the red bandana around his neck. You looking for fish worms? He laughed. No, sir, I said. We were finding coal that falls from the cars. It's mighty dangerous for you for two youngsters to be running these trucks, he said. So you tell your daddy he ought to buy coal from now on. Our daddy's on sick leave, I informed him. We ain't got any money to buy food, let much less coal. The fireman stepped away from the window. Buddy and I resumed our search for a coal. A second later, the men came back to the window. Hey, he said, your little fellows bring that coal bucket over there, over here. I got something for you. What's your name? I asked the fireman. I needed to remember you in my prayers tonight. He smiled the kindest smile I'd seen since coming to Knoxville. He wiped the back of his neck with his red bandana. You could just call me Jim, he said. The Lord will know who you're talking about. Now you boys stay away from the train when it comes through day after tomorrow. I'll throw off a scoop of coal for you so you don't have to step on the tracks. Our bucket was so full of coal it took both of us to carry it home side by side. We might actually be warm tonight, I said. Everyone was sure surprised when we bumped our way up to our house with our bucket so full. No cinders or clinkers at all, Mama explained, picking in a couple of lumps for the fireplace. Where did you get all this coal? Our guardian angel gave it to us, I answered. I gave Buddy a wink. And the day after tomorrow, if we're lucky, we might see him again. Mama looked at Buddy and me over her glasses. Does this angel have a name by any chance? Just Jim, I said. He's guardian angel for us and for the steam engine that pulls to coal cars. Mama shook her head and went back to fixing supper. The kitchen was already getting warmer. Two days later, as promised, Buddy and I stood back from the train as it steamed up to the crossing. Jim appeared in the window and gave us a wave. A second later, a large scoop of coal flew out of the engine cab, followed by a bright red scrap of cloth. Looks like Jim lost his Looks like Jim lost his neck banana, I said, running over to pick it up. Wait, there's something tied up in it. I untied the scrap of cloth and pulled it open. Well, looks like, well, just look at that. But he said two pieces of bubble gum and a dollar bill, I said, waving the money in the air. Our guardian angel mu must be rich. Buddy and I returned to the train tracks regularly all that winter. Three days, three three days a week, we met Jim in his engine cab each time we received a bucket of coal and sometimes a treat like penny, candy, or money. You can bet I never forgot to put Jim in my prayers each night. In the spring, our family moved back to the mountains. I never been so happy to see our old house and our gardens. The woods and the stream city life was not for me, but what? I, but whenever I thought Knoxville, I s smiled, remembering Jim, our guardian angel. I still remember him in my prayers. I still don't know his full name, but the Lord knows exactly who I'm talking about, even even all those years later. All right, guys, that is all for today. I hope you guys like the story that I told you. And the next story is called Whiteout by Dolores Wake Wakeoff. Coming tomorrow. And, and today is St. Patrick's Day Eve. So happy St. Patrick's Day. Um if you just be if you believe in the no in the leprechaun. What I say that? Um by the way. Uh-huh. Oh, there's five pages, all right? So I found out that this is five pages long. So tomorrow might be a pretty long story, not gonna lie.
But if you like the story that I told you, please like, please smash the please smash the like button and I'll and subscribe. Road to two thousand and I'll see you next time. Goodbye, everyone.